Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Holy crap, something hit me in the leg. It's a cat. Hey, buddy. Look at me. Hey, doing, buddy? He scaled the poop out of me. Anyways, today we are taking the 300 out, and we're going to take it through the mud, and we're going to discuss some stuff. Uh, because uh, we have a lot of new vehicles that Polaris have come out, Yamaha has come out with. I would say Honda, but let's be honest, Honda never comes out with anything new. They update slightly just enough to make you go, okay, but that's it. They ain't got nothing new right now. So uh, let me slap on the GoPro and uh, we can uh, go in the mud, talk a little bit. Maybe we'll try, I'm going to try to climb a tree, I think. Mm. Spaghetti's kicking my butt. So I will see y'all once the GoPro's on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Let me tighten this up. There you go. So if you didn't watch my last video, then you'll know that this thing, uh, we got some water in the car, so hopefully we won't have that problem today. Let's go through the woods. It's been a while since I've been through here. Holy crap, the grass is taking over. It's moments like this in a horror movie where the guy dies. Let's hope that don't happen to us today, but you never know. It's very sketchy. All the grass is tall. Bigfoot's probably running around here staring at me. Shit. I knew I was going to lose my phone today. Ugh. <laughs> Luckily this Honda don't weigh enough to mess anything up. These gym shorts are not exactly designed to hold phones in these pockets. See if we see a snake, because there's always one in here somewhere. Here, Mr. Mr. Snake. Come here, boy. What gear am I in, Thoy? Oh. Well, that was my fault. Okay, so uh, let's hope that everything is sealed right, because, again, I had it sealed. And then the other day, when I took it really deep, the carburetor started taking on water. No idea why, but hey, what are you gonna do? Oh no, my thing popped off. just whack me in the head. There's one thing I do not care much for the walls. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. They always sting at me for some reason. I never done anything to them. What the? That solid axle problem. My snorkel is sealed. I don't know if that's a snake or a stick. We're well, hoping it's not a snake. If it is, it's gonna be a very, 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 very loud yell. Oh. Come on, baby. There's any chance it stays making it up. But hey, I'm always for some fun. Come on. I swear this hole gets deeper and deeper. I cannot wait for the 6x6 to be back. So what I want to talk about today is the new Polaris 1500 everybody's been talking about. I have never in my life seen such a negative response to a vehicle. It's funny how all the uh, 
the uh, YouTube people and the UTV magazine and all the dirt tracks are like, oh my gosh, they released this. It's the best thing ever. They're innovating and not. And they are, hey, I'm not arguing about the new engine. I'm not arguing about it. But that price, starting off at a base model 1500, which is only 110 horsepower, thirty thousand dollars. The one with a cab on it and AC is almost fifty thousand dollars. And I've never, if you've watched my channel, you know I'm not the guy who goes, "Oh, you should just buy a Jeep. You should just buy a Jeep." I'm not that guy. But let me cut this off. But at the same exact time, guys, at fifty thousand dollars, you could buy a brand new Ranger and. I've seen some people comment that, and people are like, would you take your range, your brand new Ford Ranger through the woods? It's like, um, if I pay $50,000 for this thing, I wouldn't take it through the woods either. And a lot of people keep saying the farmers are going to buy it. It's for the farmers and the ranchers. Us farmers are not looking for one that expensive. Like, I don't know any farmer who's going to buy it. It's just, I don't think it's a bad thing. I love innovation, but I think $25,000 should have been the base model. And then, you know, $5,000 more than the regular one. That should have been it because... Yes, the engine's nice, but I don't see the upgrade. Like, the steel belt, great. Everything's great. I love it. But I just don't see $10,000 worth of upgrades on it, guys. I'm sure somebody can correct me, but hey. But that does bring us to our next part, which is the Yamaha. Yamaha has not only been the company that has surprised me the most this, this month, they have been the only company who cares about the consumer, I feel like. So, if you haven't heard, Yamaha changed the YXZ. It's now a 6-speed transmission instead of 5 a lot of people keep getting confused online to people like oh six speed just stands for a voice it's the same trust no they have one extra gear which is 40 percent lower than second gear meaning second gear is probably the same as it used to be and force is now 40 percent lower guys that's something different that is crazy and what every other company would have charged you an arm and a leg extra for that like oh we put a new transmission and it has it kind of has a uh so it has like a shift mode what shifts for you kind of like a talon all of this for the low, low price of $500 cheaper than last year. What company does that? No other company will even give you a new button without charge you extra. So here's the price of last year's model. This is last year's XT, XTR YXZ. This is this year's XTR YXZ. Same thing. XTR is the highest package of, I think it's not most expensive package either. Same one. And as you can see, the price actually went down. I think it's like $500. I'd have to double check. But why didn't they charge more? I don't know. I think they put a whole new transmission in it with an extra gear. They should have charged more. It would have made sense. But they looked after. Not only that, they came out with an X2 1000. Just think about that. An X2, that means like if you see my X4, it's amazing. Tight woods. And uh, the R-Max is great, but it's wide. And I love it. I'm, I might get an R-Max one day, but uh, honestly, the problem, that I, or not the problem, the thing I love about the uh, X4 is how narrow it is. It just shoots through the woods. And making a 1,000 engine in the X2, which is a two-seater, not the four-seater, is amazing. And the price point's only $19,000. Come on, that's cheap. Again, I, re I really thought they were going to go above and, above and beyond with that price, but they actually went way cheaper. I feel like they're the only ones who really kind of, I don't know. I don't want to be talking about Yamaha that great, but they just really, to me, did a lot, a lot of good stuff. Like Can Am has not come out yet, so we can't really talk too bad yet. I want to see what Can Am's doing before I really go completely like Yamaha to me won this year. But yes, Polaris released new models, but the price range ten thousand dollars more than everybody else. So in other words, if you wanted a base model fifteen hundred with one hundred and ten horsepower, to give you that notice, the the uh, R Max. The R-Max, right, which will have no cab, nothing, comes with 114. So it has more horsepower. Yes, I know it's a walk model, but that price, I know the engine's awesome. I love the engine, but I feel like it's $5,000 too much. That's my opinion. You have an opinion. You have you have your opinion. I have my opinion. I'm not trying to argue with nobody in the comments. Let's let me know what you think. I mean, I'm, if you think it's worth that, great. I just have seen nothing but negative comments from most people, and everybody's about the price. It's just, I think it's just a little too high. $30,000, you can get a Defender with a cab, or even a North Star 1000 with a cab. I just don't see where the price really matches up. Anyways, let's get back to some mud, ladies and gentlemen, because I know that's what y'all want. I super confused about why it sunk the other day in the pond. So I'll put a video right here. Holy moly, holy moly. Oh. 
Oh, we died, Landon. We killed it. What happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> well, we killed it. As you can see, it just like cut off. I don't know why it cut off in the pond. I've checked everything. I think it might have been the carb overflow. Maybe it just, I don't know, maybe it got a hole in it. But uh, anyways, I think I got it now. We're gonna put a new carb on it anyways because this one's been messed up for a long time. So this is a really good hole to go through, but if you don't have enough waddle, this Honda just sinks and that's, holy crap, it's getting bad over there. Dang it. You know, one thing I've noticed a lot lately is a lot of YouTubers have been doing very boring videos. And I don't mean that in like a negative way. I just noticed like, I'm not gonna say the guy's name, but uh, he did a video the other day and it was like, going to pick a follow up. Okay, got a follow home. Okay, he talked about the follow. Okay, that was the video. He never took the foil out. He never did anything with the foil. And I'm like, what? Wait, what? And it wouldn't be so bad, but I feel like the like this guy has almost a hundred thousand subscribers. He's getting lots and lots of views, and all his the last three or four videos had just literally been him going to get something or talking to somebody. Two thousand subscribers and. Three years, yeah, three years. That's good, I love it. I'm not arguing, I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna do this every week. But this week, I've just been down on my, but down in the dumps a little bit, I ain't gonna lie. You see a lot of these YouTubers who, the videos I just don't feel like do a lot. They don't, and I mean, my video quality is not the best, I know, and I don't do a lot of crazy, a lot of stuff like some people do, but some of these guys, like, they don't do anything. They go pick something up, then they talk, and then they, you know, and it's like, how do you get so many views? Oh, but hey, you know what? It It is what it is. I'm going to keep doing this because I enjoy this. And I I hope y'all enjoy this too. Lately, we ain't been getting a lot of views. And I think a lot of it has been. We've been, we've been a little stagnant. And it's not because I want to be stagnant. It's because everything has been breaking down. If you've been watching, you know every time I take something out, it breaks down in no time. And it makes hard to make a video when the thing breaks down in like one minute. I have three vehicles this the can-am and the x4 well the x4 technically i don't do much but trail ride because i, I do a little mud but i'm i've gotten i've gotten a utv stuck and it takes a trattle to get it out you don't want to do that then i have the six by six Polaris Ranger, but i've just kind of been stuck on this i just haven't walked on it lately because honestly i i, I haven't had time because every time I get a couple seconds, I have to be walking on one of these. And now I got the new 6x6 build for this coming. And I can't wait to start that. I think that's really going to help me get out of this funk. Like, I just feel like I've been in a funk lately. But anyways, let's get through a little bit more mud. And uh, I think that's where we go today. Let's hope we don't lose my phone. I'm so afraid to lose my phone. Come on, baby. Something touched my foot. Come on, baby. I don't know what touched my foot, but I did not like it. This would work better if I had a... Oh, oh. Okay, she will not climb a tree. Dang it, I wanted to climb, I want to climb a tree with this thing. On to the woods today. Yes, I'm going through the woods today. This is how Bigfoot eats me. And I'll tell you one thing. I watched a movie the other day called Six Headed Shark. Talk about the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But it's hilarious, I am not gonna lie. My seven year old loved it. He cried laughing the whole time. And because of Shark Week, you gotta watch some cheesy horror movies. It's only right. I think that was a stick I stabbed me in the butt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know I was going to end the video there. I really was. But I decided 
I had to show y'all all, all the stuff we've been doing behind the scenes because instead of doing full videos of a lot of this stuff I, like I used to, I'm trying to keep the videos more mainstream, less walking on, like hardcore walking on because I felt like, hey, a lot of people don't watch that. So let me show you a couple things going on right now. Just keep y'all updated. So we went ahead and changed the belt on the 6x6 Palais and uh, I've never seen a belt in my life this bad off and still walking. I mean, I got to give it credit, but holy moly, that's a bad belt. Okay, so the Can-Am is still running. I, a lot of people, I don't know if I showed you all this or not, but uh, the Can-Am's been running for like weeks. But but honestly, I haven't really drove it because I've been, been doing, I just been wanting to do some different stuff. Anyways, so this is the switch, four drive switch, on off. I think I showed y'all. No. Anyways, you see that blue wire? That blue wire is off. So it caught the tree, caught this this thing, and pulled it tight, and uh, yeah. So we definitely needed a belt on the the six by six. Did it fix the shifting problem? Nope, still won't shift. I mean, it did. It does shift right when you start it when it's super cold, which tells me it probably still is the fork, sadly. And the four drive, all the, the can am is ready to go. I think I don't know if I showed y'all yet, but we put two different kinds of axes on, trying some new ones. I think we got a wide open and an all balls because I'm trying to try. I'm trying some new axes out because I didn't care much for Demon. I think I did that little short. I don't know if I did a full video talking about. So one more thing to show y'all for today. Look how far we've gotten on this Polaris. Gas tank is off, clutches are off. Just gotta get the transmission engine out. None of this is really gonna come off. I, I gotta get a new uh, uh, bracket right here. This bracket right, this, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Anyways, it's a bracket. Gotta get that, I gotta get that done. I gotta order a new one of them along with the diff and everything else, but that's just part of it. So I got gas tank off, the carburetor off, the clutches off. We got the plastics off. I've tested the four wheel drive. That's what this little thing is for. It does work. At least it makes a noise. It's not very loud, but neither will my Hondas. Maybe it's just Can-Am and Yamahas and stuff like that. Just it have loud ones and Polaris don't have a very loud uh, four-wheel drive actuator. But it is going on. I can hear it when I plug the hot to it. But just look how straight this frame is. Like that is one straight stream. That's one streamlined frame, making it really easy to make this thing work. Everything back here is going to get used. Except, you know, I'll take the ball hitch off. And we'll probably get some new wheels. I'm thinking some new wheels. Y'all let me know what rims, not not tiles, but rims should we get. Um, and also, guys, if y'all need any uh, Polaris parts, there is a lot of good parts we have. We got plastics. We got the dash. We got a good transmission. The engine can be rebuilt. And I will sell all of all these parts for dirt cheap. Like, I ain't selling the diffs. I might I sell the front shocks. And I don't really want to sell this stuff. But I don't want to throw it away either because I was giving it to you for free. But in the same sense, we have a lot, like over $1,500 worth of parts we have to buy back here. So, so any little part that we sell will help the channel out. And also, it just, I mean, come on. I will ship these parts anywhere. I, ship it at your cost. I've had a guy one time, he wanted the handlebar switch of a Honda 300. And I said, 20 bucks. He goes, oh, okay. You said you could ship? I said, yeah, at your cost. Well, you should pay for it. I said, dude, by the time I ship it to you, I get $0. Why would I ship it to you? But he got mad about it. Some people are odd. Anyways, guys, as always, I hope y'all look like this video. I just wanted to kind of touch base a little bit. I, I feel like I'm going to start doing a little of these instead of full videos. Now, once we get the full build on the 6x6, oh, yeah, we will be going straight for it. Anyways, guys, as always, please hit the like button. Please share this video. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about it so far. And I will see you all on the next one. Well... I think we're going to take the Can-Am out. It's been like two, three weeks. The Can-Am has to get out again. Anyways, guys, I will see y'all on the next one.